So we're doing a radial color wheel design for Design Viscom. And I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. We've drawn the radial design on the poster board. This is my sample. And every triangle area is like your color wheel. So this will be my red, my red orange, my orange, my yellow orange, and so forth. On the assignment, I've asked that you will do a tint, a hue, and a shade of each color in each color section, I'm going to say, on the color wheel. I'm just going to demonstrate the red. So when you set up your palette, you always want to have the black paint, the white paint, and the red. Now, I don't always like to create a shade with black, so sometimes you'll want to use brown. And um, I did black for this demonstration, which is weird because I never use black. I should have done brown, but for this, we'll just stick with it. So I've used a lot of paint for my need. You do not need to use as much paint as I poured out. I just wanted it to be a lot of paint for the demonstration so you can see. So this is where I mix my colors in the middle. What I like to do when I'm painting is I will take, um, and I have a paper towel over here, I will take and make the hue, the pure color, the red, and then I'll add the tint. And so I will have all these pre-mixed so that you can blend easier. Now, some of you might not like when you're mixing red and you've created a pink by adding a tint. And I have a little trick that will help with that, but I am on camera so I can't go get it. But will somebody get me the orange paint? Thanks, let's see. And same with the black. When I add black to this red, sometimes it comes out maroon. And if I don't want... Oh, this looks really dark on the camera. I'm going to have to lighten this up for you guys. Thank you. So I'm going to add quite a bit more red. I should have added a little less black. In life, this is not as dark as it looks on the camera. This almost looks black to you guys, but it's very maroon, if you can see when it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to add some orange, just because the red creates these pink tones. And if you're like, yeah, I don't want to go pink, Oh, orange is a nice little help that you can avoid those pink tones. So I took some orange, I added some red, and now I'm going to add my tint. And I might have added too much tint. I don't think so. You can kind of decide how much tint you want to add. And then I'm going to add quite a bit more red, and then eventually this won't look as pink. It'll look more like a, I don't even want to say salmon, just a lighter tint of red. Okay. So I'm happy with that color. Can you guys see the difference with this camera or is it too hard to tell? I know that's the only thing I don't like is that our colors change from the recording. Okay, so here's my hue of red. Here's my tint. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the orange and add it to my shade. And that warmed it right up. And again, it looks black to you. So let me add a little more. I hate that this looks so dark. I'm going to try another one and just add straight red and see if you can see this a little bit more. Does it still look black? It's okay. Everyone's being nice to me. Maybe on the paper it'll show up more. Now because we're painting instead of a nice high quality acrylic paper or a canvas, we're just using poster board. I like to use poster board for practicing because it's so effective price-wise. So um, I use the dull side. Remember if you use that shiny side, it doesn't, it just doesn't work out. It looks jelly and you have to do multiple coats and it's a pain. So I'm just going to take my straight hue, and I'm doing this section right here. So what I'm going to do is right here I'll do the hue, I'll do the shade and the tint, and then this one I want to do a gradient so I can show you how to blend. Um, I've already outlined everything in, oh my gosh, I just went out of the lines on a demonstration. Don't go out of the lines. I'm talking too fast and not concentrating. I'm going to do this again. So I, um, I'll show you how to paint wet on wet. What I did is I outlined in ink. You can, you don't have to do that at this point. I have two different size brushes I'm using, a smaller one and a medium. I like the round tip. You can use square tip if you like. It's just my preference. It doesn't mean it's better than 
the square one. So um, I'm going to outline. I really think of how I used to color in a coloring book as a kid. When I paint, I do the same thing. I outline first, usually, and it just mentally helps me keep in the lines. Remember how I just went out of the lines? It's because I didn't outline. That's just what I prefer. So because it's poster board and not canvas, and sometimes on canvas you have to do multiple layers. So right now I'm just going to fill this, do the outlining with the thin one. I'm going to switch to my bigger paintbrush, fill it in. I could have filled it in with my smaller. I just think it's faster. And I'm going to let this sit and dry for just a minute, and then I'll go back through and do another coat. And some colors you don't have to do that with, but some colors you do. Okay, and then that's my straight hue of red. Now I'm going to go through and I'll do my tint. Now I have my paper towel here, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to rinse my paintbrush, but I'm just wiping off the red. And now I'm going to grab, did I say the tint? We're doing the tint first. Okay, I'm going to take the one that's more orange color, and I've got this weird hair on my brush. And I want to outline it. Now, for this assignment, you don't have to, but I, it is kind of nice sometimes to outline with the black. I did that first, but what I can do, because I've gone out of the lines over here, and this is a messy edge, if you can see, I want to smooth that out and hide it. And so I can go back through when this is all dry and outline it with the dark. So that's a pretty good layer and it looks pretty solid. Um, I am going to want to add one more layer later. And if that's still not light enough, I could go back, add white to my tint, and then do my next layer on top a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to do my shade and actually I want to start with the thinner brush. I do think my tint isn't quite light enough, so I think I will lighten that up before I do the second coat. And I just use the small brush for the whole thing. So there's my hue, tint, shade. I want to make that lighter. Why these are drying, I want to show you how to do that gradient. I don't want to get my sleeve in wet paint because these don't wash out like we talked about before in class. So I'm going to flip it upside down. It's great to flip things upside down. I want to start with my shade, go into my hue, and end in my tint. But because my tint wasn't light enough before I start this, I want to make that tint lighter at this time. So I'm just going to add, and it's so much better to work slowly. So I'm going to add a little bit of white. Because I can always take more. It's harder to go darker once you've added a lighter to that tint. And I'm not mixing all of it, I'm just mixing a section. And I'm happy with that. So, um, clean my brush off. I don't want to, I really do want to rinse. I'm just rinsing over here my paintbrush. I don't want to wipe off a tint and then go into a shade because that leftover paint would lighten that up. Okay, so I'm going to start with the shade. I'm going to go this darker one that looks black to you guys. But notice when I'm painting on this white poster board, it doesn't. So, okay, same idea. I'm going to outline first. This paint can get kind of thick, and sometimes it's hard to paint it smooth. If that's the case, I add a little water to my paint. What I'll do is I'll dip my paintbrush in water, and like two or three times, and mix it around. Just thins it out just barely. I don't love telling you that because sometimes students will make it so watery, it's like watercolor and you want to be careful of that. Now that's very wet and I want it to be wet so at this point I want to move fast and grab the hue, the straight red, and I'm going to outline my edges first and I grabbed a good amount of paint here. And I'm grabbing more red and because it's wet on wet I'm able to blend that. And I know I'm going to have to do a second layer of this red. See how you see that line right here? You don't want to see, I'm going to turn my light on. Can you see that better? I don't want to see that line, but when I add um, my second layer, I won't. So here's my tint. And again, I'm moving fast because I don't want this to dry. I went out of the line again. I'll just make that smooth and fix that with the marker later. I'm going to add a little more white because it's still not as light as I want. 
this almost it does look more like a salmon color instead of a pink and I'm fine with that so see now I can take because it's wet on wet and blend that tint in with the hue and I'm just gonna wipe my brush off go back into the red hue and pull that up that is a false spell so everyone ignore that and now it's blending really nice I'm liking this a lot okay now I'm gonna take my now I'm going into that second layer I'm taking that shade I'm pulling that up into the red hue okay and that looks pretty good now I can go back through and add my second layer of everything I've lightened my tint my brush already has the tint color so I'm going to do that second layer sometimes if I lighten it too much it's not a bad thing if it needs to be done but you might have to do a third layer this one luckily I didn't have to it looks light enough and I like that I put the tint and the shade right next to each other so it makes them look really contrasted next to each other and I'm going to do the second color of the shade and I'm moving fast you guys do not have to move as fast as I'm moving and on that shade I can still see a little bit of layers you can't see it on this camera but I might have to do a third layer and then I'm going to take my straight red hue and because I don't want paint on my shirt I'm going to flip it upside down these are acrylic paints so they do dry fast especially we're in Utah where it's dry if you're on a dry hot day you'd be amazed at how that affects even though we're indoors but today's a nice rainy day so it's not drying as fast and that's good okay and so I think we've achieved that I'm gonna try and hold it up so you can see okay good luck